The definition of healing, to bring light to the darkness that your ancestors may have brought upon you and to bring light to those after you. The definition of healing. The importance of healing in the community, one, we are community beings. So when you heal one, you heal all. And when more attention is placed on one intention, it becomes more powerful. This event is called a healing event because I wanted people to come connect and raise their consciousness with like-minded people. It came about after my own loss of connection with others. So it came about my own needing for this healing. This event is a curated experience for the community to come together and to connect and to heal with others that are seeking a higher level of consciousness. It is a community event that brings together every aspect of mind, body, and spirit the four parts of the event is going to be the dancing ceremony to open up the space, the guided breath work to get everybody grounded, very calm and open to receiving the information. The third part of the event are the educational panels. One panel is going to be about utilizing the energies of nature around you. And the second panel is going to be about attracting a righteous abundance, bringing in money with a good karma. And to end the entire event, is gonna be a healing sound bath. The opening ceremony will be provided by a group of danza Azteca dancers. that will come in and just bring in positivity into the space, charge it up to get people ready. The guided breathwork session is going to be a time where we can slow down, learn the importance of the breath, and really become grounded within our own selves. The panels are gonna consist of female and male, the first panel is going to be more feminine energy. And that is about utilizing the energies of nature around you. All of the energies around us, whether it be the earth, the moon, the herbs, the mushrooms, they all support us in some sort of way, mind, body, or spirit. So in this panel, we have four beautiful women that are gonna be educating you on how to utilize these energies to support yourself. I was, um already really enjoying my life. I taught dance as well for uh, six years or so in the LAUSD school system, um, became an entrepreneur, uh, was, you know, creative, was designing. And then I hit this place where I saw what and envisioned what I knew was possible through the divine, through my connection with the divine. And then trying to figure out how that showed up in my 3D existence was yeah. not matching. Yeah. And my patience wasn't matching. And that was kind of the moment, I guess, where I first started having those questions of like, why am I here? You know, um, am I feeling fulfilled being here? And, you know, why would 
spirit, the divine God put me in this position and not give me what I need to succeed. Um, so that was probably, yeah, that was like really my initiation into my digging deep into my faith. And that took, you know, rounds and rounds and evolutions and evolutions and many spiritual awakenings over and over again. But yeah, I think Saturn return, mm. I would pinpoint that as a moment that like really had to dig deep within. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I had a similar experience. My Saturn return almost took me out. <laughs> I said, what is this? And why am I going through it? It is not fair. And I didn't like it one bit, but on the other side of it was such an evolution. I think it's interesting um, being amongst someone who was born into spirituality and that being something that has served as a tool for you from the very beginning. I'm curious if there's anyone else on the panel who did not have that similar experience and spirituality was something that came as an introduction to you later. And what were the differences in that being with the possibilities of probably being programmed to have a different experience, but then being bombarded with a whole nother universe, a whole nother realm of reality. What would that look like for someone who wasn't brought up in it? What a beautiful gift and a beautiful opportunity. And so is there anyone on the panel who this journey is a little bit newer? Well, first I'll say that my father was incarcerated when I was a child um, from the age of three until I was 13. So for 10 years. And he was the one in the family that held the spiritual knowledge. So when I would go and visit him and I would tell him what was happening to me, he would provide me with the necessary tools. Um, and I was lucky to have that. I was lucky to have that experience. But I didn't talk to my dad often enough to really embody that wisdom. And so I will say that I definitely had almost a dark night of the soul moment. Um, for, you, for those who don't know what that is, it's really like a moment that happens in your life where um, you experience almost like a Saturn return, a deep depression because of the amount of information um, and the way your, your mental is stretching and you're pushing your consciousness to new levels and to new heights and to perceive information differently. And that is that dark night of the soul moment. So when I was 19 years old, I experienced that while I was in college. I stopped going to classes. I just, I literally just shut down my whole external life. I'm like, no more. I dropped out of school and I was like, I can just, I'm gonna walk this path like with just faith. And I don't even know what this faith is. I don't really even know what any of this is, but I feel that there's something more and I'm gonna go find it. That's so powerful, that, that seeking of something more, getting to that point where you're almost so tapped out that you're like, okay, something has to give. Something has to give and something has to work. So then we move into the process of digging and searching for the tools, searching for the things that are going to help us navigate this experience. So my next question is for Dea. Uh, what tools did you find? in your dig? What tools did you discover as you went searching for the more? You went searching for the answers to questions you may not have had, had answers to. What tools did you pick up along your journey and how have they been a source of empowerment for you on your journey towards liberation? So for me, when I think about my upbringing, I grew up in a very like Christian home and so for me, I realized that a lot of my existence was attached to a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, and a lot of um, just confusion. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand a lot of the regulations that came with um, growing up in that atmosphere and going to a Baptist church and also non-denominational. Um, that really caused a lot of havoc, I feel like, in my within my spirit, but when you spoke of dark night of the soul, I felt like that was what I was experiencing. I found God mm. and that was the tool. Mm. Spirit was the tool. When I realized that I literally can shape my relationship with God with how that looks for me, even though it looks confusing to everyone else on the outside. So I started studying other religions. Studying was another form of just like ways that I would love on myself. 
Um, I wanted to know more than just one way. I wanted to know the many ways yeah. and what that looked like, what paths and what options do I have? Because I felt guilty for even looking into that. And so there was a book that I read called Tomorrow's God by Donald Neal Walsh. And that book today still reigns so powerful on my shelf, front and center. Um, because every time I go back to that book, that was where I read, God is gonna be God, period. The second panel is gonna be consisting of people like myself, Joseph Octaviani, Ra, Jay Allen from Gangsta Holistic, and Jamero. We are gonna be talking about how to attract a righteous abundance. Just because you are spiritual does not mean you don't have to be about money. It does not mean that you don't have to be about attracting abundance. Abundance is something that naturally flows into our life and we are blocking it based off our beliefs about money, who we're hanging around and so on. So this panel is gonna be about changing the relationship that you have with money. Before we dive in, I want to just start just at the top with just dismantling a bunch of these quotes that we have heard growing up, ones that I know I have heard growing up, that actually perpetuated an unhealthy relationship with money. So this question is for anyone who wants to answer, anyone who has quotes that they may have heard, that they want to realize as they begin to become conscious with money, that it actually wasn't good. Some of the ones that I know that I grew up with, money is the root of all evil. I know that was one that I held on to dearly. So I was like, I don't need money. Money's not good. Money's the root of all evil. My mama's favorite, money don't grow on trees. So now I have this concept of scarcity and this fear of not being able to produce money, to reproduce money. Um, and then the last one is that you don't talk about money. Money's not a conversation you have. We don't talk about money at the table. We don't talk about how much people are getting paid. We don't ask questions about money. And so are there any quotes or sayings or beliefs that you heard growing up or that you um, had instilled in you that we want to just dismantle here before we even dive into the conversation so that we are able to be coming from a space of openness and a space of receiving and being able to look and view money in its rightful place? Yeah, I'll go ahead with that one. Uh, very simple term, uh, was I don't got it. Uh, like my grandmother, I grew up with my grandmother. And uh, anytime you ask for something growing up, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? We need some shoes, we want some candy money, we want some, you know, something fun, you know, kids looking for grandma. I ain't got it, I ain't got it, I ain't got it. I mean, she did have a house, she had multiple cars, she, she raised us, but her default answer was I don't got it. And I feel like as a child, I adopted that and that was in my paradigm that I don't got it, even if I had it, because my reality was my grandma had it, she had everything. She raised all of us. So my grandma had everything, but what was coming out of her mouth was I don't got it. So I literally had to work myself out of that I don't got it mode. So even if I don't want to give it up, it's just like I got it. You can't have it, but I got it. You know what I'm saying? Or I got it, or I don't might not want to share it, but I got it. I always got it. So I literally had to program that out of my brain that, that I don't got it, especially when you actually do have it, it's just a habitual thing. That's something that she may have learned from her mother or her surroundings, but my grandma always had it. But naturally to us and all the kids, was just, I don't got it. So I, I'm, I'm glad I do need that out of my, my paradigm. Mm, it's powerful. Anyone else? For me, it's not so much of a quote because my parents didn't really talk so much. They, uh, I played ice hockey growing up and that was pretty expensive for them. So basically, we just knew they didn't have any extra money to spend on me. And my dad was a machinist. He worked you know, full time and overtime. And then he came home and he had a bunch of rental properties that were garbage that he would come and, and work from the time he got home till midnight. Every single day for almost my entire life, my mom rented a house next door to her house and she owned a daycare. And so for me, uh, when I was in fifth grade, I had to start mowing lawns because there's no money for school clothes, no money for me to buy food if I want. Uh, and I see my parents working from the time they get up to the time they go to sleep. And so for me, the belief was that money only comes with hard work. And it does. I, I became very successful through hard work. 
However, when I had my businesses, I used to sell in gyms in downtown LA. When I had my businesses, I found myself waking up at 5 a.m. and staying at my gym until 9 p.m. every single day for almost 10 years. And so I had to really unprogram that concept that the only way to obtain money is through hard work because it was really a curse and it was, uh, there was a ceiling to how much you can obtain through hard work as well. Okay, I believe, um, you know, even on like a subconscious level, I feel like a lot of the things that were shown for communities of color is that money is attached to what struggles. You know what I mean? Through the music that we listen to, some of the TV shows that we watch and things like that. And, you know, that's how I grew up. You know, listening to black music, this is that. It's like, wow, you gotta do all that just to make a dollar. You know, you gotta do this. Illegal to make a dollar. You know what I mean? So I think on a subconscious level, that really definitely does affect us in a way that I uh, disassociated myself with it was just habits, doing different things every day because making yourself better is it, it's never easy. You know, and working with your subconscious is something that you have to do every single day. I mean, you may get distracted, you may get swayed this way, that way, but it's something that you have to constantly work on. And when I shifted out of that, that struggle mentality, that's when things opened up for me. Just me being my authentic self, not caring what anybody said, just being myself and chasing my purpose and not the not pay. For me, and this was a more recent one, I would say probably in the past year, when I really, you know, like the plain way it started to really blossom, um, I was forced to really change my, my mindset on money. But the one that really just hurts me, still to this day, I'll be honest with you, is that it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I hear that, I'm like, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Do you need it or you don't need it? Mm -hmm. You need it, then you get it. You don't need it, you don't get it. It's simple as that. If you want it, it's gonna nourish you, whatever that may be, material or not, you get it. And so a lot of us, they look at the bank account and they look at something that they absolutely need and it's like, ah, it's too expensive for me. But for me, I really had to relay my trust in this isn't scarce. The money that I put out is not, you know, it's, it's gone and oh my God, I'm gonna regret it after. It's, it's gonna come in. It's that giving and then the receiving. You know, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. I just talked about this with Jay. That giving to the things that you love, to the things that make you happy, you're going to receive that love and happiness from something else. You're going to receive that abundance. So I, I really started to understand that abundance was, was effortlessly flowing into all of us at all times. It wants the universe is like, here, take it. But a lot of us have these blockages like we've all been accustomed to. To where we really just give our hand to the, to the universe and say, I don't, I don't want it right now. I'm focused on scarcity. You know, so that, that saying right there, it's too expensive. I really had to, it really just throws me off. You know, um, I had to work my way around that because I've heard it my entire life. It's too expensive, too much, too much. And it's like, we don't have to shop at the dollar store all the time. I like quality. I like things that are going to feed me for a while. I don't like things just for the right now. So, yeah, that's, that would be my quote. I love that, and it reminds me of... The sound bath will end the night, and it'll feature different frequencies, a piano, and water in the background, so that we can have a nice, relaxing experience, and so that the, the vibrations of the sound can really penetrate you deeper than just the skin. What I want people to take away from this event is not just connection with others and long lasting friendships, but I also want people to learn the information that is given and to apply it to their daily life. 
I also want people to understand the importance of not just the breath, but the sounds that you put in through your ears. My name is Joseph Octaviani, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming to this event, for investing your time, attention, and money in Life the Plant Way and what we have to offer. I hope that we can connect at a future date and that we can do these all around the world.